Hey guys, it's Kara, the foodie dietitian, and you are watching the very first episode of What's in My CSA Box, where each week we'll uncover what beautiful seasonal produce lies in this big old box here, and we'll talk about different ways you can utilize them in the kitchen, and I'll share some of my favorite recipes with you. So if you're sitting here wondering, what the heck is a CSA? A CSA is stands for Community Supported Agriculture. So basically what happens is farms um, set up farm shares or CSAs and what you do is provide a lump sum of money up front and that guarantees you a supply of produce, fresh produce, each and every week from the farm. It's a great way if you're looking to include more vegetables and produce into your diet uh, to inspire you to cook with more fruits and veggies in the kitchen. And it's also just a really feel-good activity, going to the farm or going to the farm stand, picking up your CSA, knowing that you're supporting local farms, you're supporting your community, and that you're getting produce that is rich in nutrients. So since this is the first episode of What's in My CSA Box, this episode is going to be a little bit longer than the rest as we'll go through each type of produce. And then in subsequent weeks, we'll skip the produce we've already touched on and just focus on the new stuff. So let's see what's inside. So first up is bok choy. So bok choy is also known as Chinese cabbage and it's a great source of vitamin C and vitamin K. So bok choy works really well in stir fries with a little soy sauce, ginger. Um, it's also great on the grill. You can also make bok choy chips, just like kale chips. Same concept, only use bok choy. If you don't think you like bok choy, try bok choy chips. You just roast them in the oven, and you'll get a nice uh, crispy snack. Let's see what's next in the box. A good old head of lettuce. Who doesn't love salads in the summertime? Our bodies crave cold foods like salad in the summertime to balance out the heat. So use lettuce in all different kinds of salads. You can even make lettuce wraps. Uh, lately, my favorite thing has been taking butter lettuce or bib lettuce and some black beans, a little shredded cheddar, some diced tomatoes and red onion and a uh, drizzle of cilantro and wrapping those up for a nice little taco salad lettuce wrap. Um, you could also, my go-to uh, lunch this summer has been using my CSA lettuce and pairing it with some uh, fresh seasonal pro uh, fruits like raspberries or strawberries, blueberries, even stone fruit like peaches, nectarines, uh, and plums. And then rounding that out with a little bit of um, soft goat cheese or feta and walnuts, uh, a drizzle of balsamic, olive oil, a little freshly um, cracked pepper, and you're good to go. Let's see, next up, we've got curly kale. <laughs> um, kale is so popular, it's such a trendy vegetable if you're not sick of it already. Um, I know I'm not, it's still one of my favorite vegetables. Um, with kale, I love using kale as a side dish and just sauteing it um, with a little bit of olive oil, some minced garlic, uh, and then putting some, maybe a quarter cup of water uh, in the pan to help it wilt and cook. Covering the pan, letting it cook for about five minutes on medium heat, uncovering it, and letting it continue to cook until the water is all absorbed. Um, and then I'll season it with salt, pepper, maybe a little um, crushed red pepper, and it's perfect. Um, other ways to use kale, you can pretty much put kale in everything. You can incorporate kale into soup, um, on pizzas, on sandwiches. I'll put sauteed kale in my egg sandwiches in the morning. You could throw kale in pasta, like mac and cheese, or even lasagna. Um, and you can also make kale salad. Uh, I love massaged kale salads. All you have to do is dress the kale with a little bit of oil and vinegar, make sure to remove the stems, and then use your hands, get your hands dirty, and literally massage that kale for about two minutes or so until you see the kale start to wilt. Um, and, it's, and it's great, I love kale salads. And kale is a nutrition powerhouse. It's loaded with vitamin C, A, K, B vitamins, and fiber. 
Okay, let's see what's next. Whoa! <laughs> Hello, Carrot Top! <laughs> I love seeing carrot greens on carrots. I also love seeing dirt on my vegetables. Can we just talk about that? I've got dirt on my hands right now, and I'm loving it. Uh, you know your vegetables are fresh and from the farm when they've got dirt on them. Um, so carrots are great. They are loaded with beta carotene, um, which is really good for your eyesight. Um, and they're really easy to use in the kitchen. Um, carrots are delicious roasted. Um, one of my favorite recipes is uh, roasted carrots with a little bit of curry powder. Um, you could also uh, grate carrots in a salad um, or even chop them up in a salad. You can use them in so many different ways. And next up, we've got cauliflower. Ooh, beautiful golden cauliflower. Check out that gorgeous color. Love it. Um, so cauliflower is um, belongs to a group of vegetables called brassicas. Uh, also in this group are uh, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, radishes, um, and brassica vegetables are uh, known to contain a certain type of antioxidant that helps to prevent uh, chronic diseases like cancer, uh, heart disease, diabetes, etc. So they're very nutritious, loaded with antioxidants. Um, cauliflower is awesome. It's so versatile. Um, people are doing some really fun things with cauliflower lately. Certainly you could just chop it up and roast it. Um, that's definitely a go-to of mine to make a nice side dish. Um, but I've also had fun lately with making cauliflower mashed potatoes. We basically cook the cauliflower, throw it in the food processor with a little milk, Parmesan cheese, um, maybe a little butter, and you've got delicious uh, cauliflower mashed potatoes. I've also seen people making cauliflower rice, um, where basically you're just grating the cauliflower or pulsing it until it's a really fine consistency. And then you could have raw cauliflower rice, or you could then go ahead and throw that in the pan um, and make like a cooked cauliflower couscous, if you will. <clears throat> and next up, we've got scallions or green onions. You'll see them listed as both in recipes. Um, this is another vegetable that you can put on almost anything. Um, you could throw it on top of soups as a garnish. Um, you could use it as a garnish on anything really, even like sweet potatoes for instance. Um, one of my favorite ways to use green onions is um, to top off a savory oatmeal that I make um, with green onion, a little bit of um, sharp cheddar cheese, and, uh, and a, a sunny side up egg on top with, oh, and once the yolk gets running in there, it is so good. Um, you can throw scallions on top of pizzas. Um, I use it to saute shrimp with a little bit of white wine. Um, really, the opportunities are endless. All right, next up, whoa, this is a honker. <laughs> um, this is a daikon radish. So this is a Japanese radish that um, is cultivated in Asia, and um, you'll see it a lot in Asian cooking. Um, uh, the daikon radish is a variety of radish, uh, so therefore it's going to be in that same group that cauliflower is, the brassica group. So same um, health-promoting benefits with this guy. Uh, with daikon radishes, you can make kimchi. Um, you can roast them. They're beautiful roasted. They'd be great roasted with these carrots right here. Or you could even slice them up like fries, put them in the oven, a little salt and pepper, and you've got yourself some daikon fries. All right. And we've got some fresh herbs, some fresh oregano. Mmm, I love the smell of oregano. Um, so oregano is great, um, especially fresh oregano. You could incorporate it into, let's say, if you're making a homemade veggie burger. Um, it's beautiful, sautéed with beans um, or pasta. Uh, you could even make pesto uh, or uh, an infused oil with fresh oregano. Um, and that would be great as a dipping sauce for um, some freshly baked bread or uh, to top off your pasta with. And next up, we've got some summer squash. Patty pan squash is what these little funky shaped guys are called. And then we've got some regular summer squash here too. Um, so I gotta be honest with you, summer squash isn't my favorite vegetable. 
neither a zucchini. Um, I just much prefer a winter squash varieties like butternut squash and pumpkin and acorn squash. Um, that being said, um, summer squash is really nutritious. Great source of vitamin C, fiber, magnesium, phosphorus, and potassium. Um, so really nutritious. And it's easy to cook too. You can, uh, you can roast summer squash, saute it, you could grill it. Um, and since I'm not a big fan of summer squash, I recently just tried pickling summer squash um, using a mandolin slice, slicer, um, slicing really thin uh, pieces of summer squash and then um, pickling them uh, with some cilantro and pickling herbs and spices. And it's actually really delicious. Um, so summer squash in pickling form gets two thumbs up for me. I think we've got one more thing left in here. And that is fruit, woo! We've got raspberries, fresh raspberries. Look at this gorgeous color. Aren't these beautiful? Yum. Um, so raspberries are delicious. Um, they're uh, in season around July, August time frame. And I eat raspberries, I put raspberries on everything. I put it on top of yogurt, cottage cheese, um, oatmeal, I'll even um, put it on top of like a peanut butter um, toast. You could puree raspberries and put them into popsicle molds with some coconut water or um, yogurt or coconut milk. Um, you could even make raspberry ice cream and use fresh raspberries in an ice cream maker. For more recipes and culinary inspiration, head on over to my blog and sign up for blog updates so that you never miss a recipe. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. And I'll catch you next week on What's in My CSA Box.